In this video, I'd like to provide students with some help reading through chapter 12 of book one of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. So let's read together the text of chapter 12. As your first reading, I'll provide some comments as we go, and uh, we'll move on to the end of book one in chapter 13. So we've got just this and one more chapter, and we'll be finished with book one. Let's read chapter 12 together. These things being discussed, let us consider with respect to felicity whether it is among the number of things laudable or rather of things honorable, things laudable or to be praised or honorable. And we'll see that there's a distinction between these two things, though they seem similar, things laudable and things honorable. For it is evident that felicity does not consist in power. It seems, therefore, that everything which is laudable is praised because it possesses a certain quality and is, in a certain respect, referred to something else. For we praise the just and brave man, and in short, the good man, and also virtue on account of works and actions. We likewise praise the strong man and the racer because they are naturally adapted to possess certain qualities and have reference in a certain respect to something that is good and worthy. But this also is evident from the praises which pertain to the gods, for they appear to be ridiculous when referred to us. <clears throat> this, however, happens, as we have said, because praise subsists from relation. But if praise is given to things of this kind, it is evident that no praise can be given to the most excellent things, but something greater and better pertains to them as also appears to be the case. For we proclaim the gods to be blessed and happy, and we also proclaim the most divine of men to be blessed. And in a similar manner we celebrate what is good. For no one praises felicity in the same way that he does justice, but he proclaims it to be blessed as something more divine and excellent than justice. Eudoxus, likewise, in his defense of pleasure, appears to have given it the palm of victory in a proper manner. For in consequence of its not being praised as being among the number of good things, he considered this as an indication or proof that it was more excellent than the things that are laudable. But God and the good are things of this kind, for other things also are referred to these. For praise indeed is given to virtue, since from this we are enabled to perform beautiful deeds. Encomiums, however, pertain to deeds, and in a similar manner to bodies and souls. The accurate decision, discussion, however, of these things is perhaps more adapted to a treatise on encomiums. But to us it is evident, from what has been said, that felicity is among the number of things honorable and perfect. It seems likewise that it is so, because it is a principle. For we, all of us, do everything else for the sake of this. But we admit that the principle and cause of what is good is something honorable and divine. So in <clears throat> chapter 12, Aristotle argues that the good or felicity is not something that's laudable because all things that are praised are praised on account of their relation to something else. Whereas happiness is 
good on its own account, and therefore it's not laudable, but it is honorable. And he makes this distinction in chapter 12. And we'll see why he feels a need to make this distinction as we continue in the study of his ethics. That's a short chapter, pretty simple to understand, I think. If you have any questions about any of these chapters or any of these topics, please feel free to uh, post questions on the forums anytime, and I'll respond. Uh, but I'm going to cut off there with chapter 12 of book 1 of Aristotle's Ethics. I hope that's a helpful first reading. Uh, now it's time for you to go and make that study for mastery and make this lesson your own. God bless your studies.